Good morning. Welcome to Demystifying Visual Management with Heidi Lovell. I'm Jessica Dang with Results Washington. My pronouns are she, her, and I'll be your moderator today. Today we have about 870 attendees registered for this session. We're so happy that you're here. I'm joined today by Emily Dahl, who will be providing ASL interpretation today. And thanks to my teammate, Kathy, behind the scenes, who is handling all the technology needs. I want to share a few things before we get started today. We know many of you are familiar with Zoom meetings, but there are some differences in Zoom webinar, which we're using. And the biggest difference is you won't be able to talk or have your video visible. This ensures all participants can focus on today's presentation. We wanna draw your attention to a few different features in Zoom and how we'll use them. First, notice the toolbar. Move your mouse and the toolbar will appear and you can see the icons for chat and Q&A. We will not be using chat during today's uh, session. We will be posting the link to the presentation in the handout uh, and it will appear in chat, but chat between uh, participants is not will not work. Um, we will have Q&A during today's session, so feel free to pop in a question at any time during the Q&A, and we'll do our best to provide some answers. Obviously, with so many of you present, we won't be able to get to all your questions, but we'll do our best. If you are having some technology issues, please uh, put that in Q&A, and we'll do our best to help you. Uh, You'll notice an icon for closed captioning. If you want to see the captioning, click on that icon and select view full transcript. And you can adjust your screen view by adjusting this vertical bar um, from side to side to make the presentation larger or the speaker. Session materials are available on our website and the video from today's session will be available within about a, a week. If we get disconnected or we run into tech troubles, we'll get the webinar back up in about five minutes. If we can't, we will record the session and post it at a later time. Finally, at the end of the session, a survey will pop up. Please take a moment to complete that survey. This will provide the presenter and our team great feedback. Well, as I mentioned, uh, we have Heidi Lovell with us today. Um, a little bit about Heidi. Heidi is a strategy and performance consultant with the Department of Enterprise Services. She is experienced in facilitation, training, consultation, coaching, and applying lean principles and tools. With over 15 years in state government, she is passionate about public service and the vision of making government better for Washingtonians. When not at work, she's spending time with her four children, cooking, planning, epic parties, and enjoying the Northwest rain. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you, Jessica. Um, and thank you to all of you for being here today. I'm so um, honored by your time and your presence. Um, I uh, was listening to the, um, the governor and the keynote yesterday and just hearing people reflect on the fact that we have been doing this conference for 10 years. Um, and I was privileged enough to be there for the very first conference. And so I'm honored to, to still be here serving Washington today. I have deep, deep love for this event and I am very grateful to Results Washington for putting it on and grateful to all of you for being here. Um, so as Jessica mentioned, today we're gonna be talking about demystifying visual management. So um, here is where we're headed today. So I'm gonna do a quick introduction to visual management um, in general, just a quick overview. And then I'm gonna talk about some different types of visual management help you understand different situations where that might be helpful and give lots of examples to picture, of course. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about, um, I'm gonna give you seven tips for addressing common problems that come up um, when we're trying to work through uh, starting visual management. And at the very end, I'll give you a, a tool, a checklist that you can use to, um, to help yourself as you, as you plan visual management. Um, so before we get started, uh, I, I want to know what your experience with visual management has been um, so far. So Kathy is going to launch a poll for us. If you wouldn't mind just taking a second to answer, when it comes to visual management, what would you say? Are you here to learn what it is? Uh, you know about it, but don't have experience using it yet? You have a little bit of experience using it, you've dipped your toe in the water, or you have a lot of experience using it. So go ahead and take a moment and um, answer that for me. And while you do, I'm gonna talk a bit about um, 
depending on what level you're at, what you can expect. So if you're here to learn what visual management is, you're in the right place. You'll not only get an introduction to what it is, you'll um, have in advance some tips about how to avoid co common problems. If you know about it, but you haven't actually had experience using it, hopefully after seeing all the examples today, something will have inspired you to cross that line into a person who, who tries it out for themselves. And whether you have a little bit of experience using visual management or a lot, you probably have run into some very common problems. And so I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips to, to overcome those things today. Um, so we're gonna give a few more seconds to have you answer the poll and Kathy can then share the results and we can see who we have in the room with us today. One of the sessions I went to yesterday, the, the host had fancy music for during the poll. I loved that. I don't have it. So I'm going to sit here in awkward silence. There we go. Okay. So it looks like 43% of you are here to learn what it is. So like I said, you are in a great place. Um, you'll definitely, by the time you leave here today, have a, a good understanding about what visual management is and how to get started. And then we have uh, another half of you um, who have some experience using it. So hopefully, again, for you by today, um, by the end of today, you will have um, uh, more success every time you use it. Okay, so um, I chose the title of this session very carefully. So demystifying visual management. And the reason that that um, rings for me is that for some reason, visual management can be one of those um, things that it gets lumped into the basic lean tools, right? Like visual management and, and all the others. Um, but it can be a little bit mysterious. And I, I know this from personal experience. I had a little bit of imposter syndrome around visual management. I had been a lean practitioner for a couple of years and I still felt like visual management must be something really fancy or really technical. Um, the only examples I had really seen were like the, the lights in a warehouse, the hands on lights, if you um, are familiar with those. Um, and I remember like one year setting as a learning goal. I'm really, I've got to figure this visual management thing out. If I'm going to have any credibility as a lean practitioner, I set it as my learning goal for the year. I asked my coach, can you like tell me everything you can about visual management? I remember her giving me kind of a funny look and saying like, what do you want to know? I'm like, uh, everything. She said, oh, oh okay. Um, and I didn't quite understand her response until, you know, a few months later, um, she asked me to help another person um, put together some visual management. She said, because you're really experienced with visual management. I went, what? I am? Like, what is that thing? And she said, oh, yeah, you know how you use that certain board and that was really successful. And you know how you use this certain sign in your office and that's really helpful. And she listed all these examples of things that I was doing in my work. I was like, that visual management, that's all it is? Oh, okay, okay. Well then, you know, check that box, I, I get it. Um, but what that helped me understand is that what visual management is, is, is more of a principle than a tool really. So, and the principle is very simple. It is make information visible to make the work more effective. So it's a little different than other lean tools where you could, you know, go to the internet and say, you know, I want an A3 template, or I want a four box problem solving, or I want a checklist for this and this and that. It's there, it isn't as easily, um, you can't just pick up a tool and copy and paste it into your workplace. It's a principle, it's how we approach the work. Um, so if visual management sounds overwhelming, remember, it is very simple. It is really make information visible to make the work more effective. And there's some benefits when we do that, right? So as humans, we can absorb information more quickly when it's visual. A research report commissioned by 3M found that visual aids improve learning by up to 400%. It's pretty significant. Um, they also found that we process visuals 60,000 times faster than we do text, and that the average person only remembers about a fifth of what they hear. 
um, in an auditory way. So visuals can help people understand more quickly and retain information better as well. So we, um, as a team, as humans can absorb information more quickly. And then we as a team can benefit when everyone can see the same information. Um, it can help equalize, level the playing field when everyone has access to the same information, then we can all make decisions together. It spreads that, that knowledge. Um, and then the biggest benefit of visual management is it's easier to see waste and problems more quickly, right? As continuous improvement professionals, we're always searching for problems so that we can solve them in order to deliver better value um, to our customers, to our partners, to our teams. And um, anything we can do to find that waste more quickly, see those problems more quickly, is gonna benefit us overall and visual management does that. Now I will acknowledge that um, there are Certain, some people have a visual impairment, um, and so that can be a slightly different situation. Um, I'll give a few examples as we go on about um, accessibility and visual management as we get there. Um, so I want to talk about four types of visual management, um, and they're these. And I, I will say these are not like um, widely acknowledged four types. If you Google them, you won't find um, these four types anywhere. <laughs> these are my, my categorizations because I find that they're helpful for me to think about um, visual management in these different ways. So I'm going to show you visual tools at a process step, visual management of the work, visual management of a process flow, and visual management of performance. And the reason that helps me to categorize them um, is because then I can know that if I need to see the work, if I need to see things flow through the process, if I need to see performance, if I need to make an improvement at a process step, um, then I might need visual management. So I'm gonna go through each one of these categories and give you several examples. And the first is visual tools at a process step. So this is about when you're using a visual um, signal to make a certain step of the process work better and give some visual information about that step to everyone. This is like at the point of use, the point of service, um, and here are some examples. So I love this one. This is from um, an airline that uh, was um, had people traveling on long international flights. And this was in the days when we still served meals on planes. And the flight attendants were really struggling to make the decision for individual flyers about whether to wake them up for those meals. Some folks would be disappointed if they missed a meal and others would be frustrated if they were awakened. And so that left flight attendants trying to guess or ask seatmates or get it wrong. Um, so what they did was introduce these um, eye masks, sleep masks, um, that you can see this side uh, that I'm showing says, do not disturb in red. And the other side um, was green and it said, please wake me. Um, and so at a glance, a flight attendant could know exactly what that decision was to make. They didn't spend time having to try to make that decision and it reduced the errors significantly and increased customer satisfaction with just a little visual tool. This next example I love, I think it's a law of the universe that you can never plug in a USB or anything like that correctly the first time. So I like the idea of just using, you know, a little bit of, of marker, a few little visual indicators can reduce the, that waste, those few seconds that get wasted every time you plug something in with that very simple visual. This sign makes me laugh. If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. I always want to know what the story was that led, that led people to putting that sign up. How many times was that bridge? Um, knocked a little bit before that sign went up. But sometimes you might see things that say, you know, um, clearance is eight feet and six inches. And maybe you know how tall your vehicle is, maybe you don't, um, but this sign is very, very clear. Uh, this example is from a dentist office who were practicing lean. Um, they were thinking about how they were spending their time during the day. And the medical assistants and the dental hygienists spending a lot of time trying to track down the dentist to get things signed or approved or hovering outside of patient rooms, trying to uh, catch the dentist between patients um, and sometimes missing the dentist and sometimes getting at, her, at him. 
Um, and so they were having, you know, some hit and miss success. And then the other thing that was happening is that sometimes the dentist was signing things and either, you know, leaving them on a counter or handing it to a different ass assistant. Just a lot of rework, a lot of time wasted um, and the dentist feeling overwhelmed every time as he was moving about the office, right? Um, trying to figure out what, what he needed to do. So they instituted this system, this counter that you see here before you was in the, the middle of their office, the hub where everyone walked through frequently. Um, and if they had any kind of document approval prescription that needed review, they would put it in that manila folder and flip up the pink side um, so that every time the dentist walked through, he knew whether he had something to accomplish or not between patients. Um, and then when he had signed or approved, he would flip it to green and then the medical assistant didn't have to work to track down um, the dentist. They could see exactly when it was done. Saved a lot of time and a lot of waste. Uh, and then this last example just makes me smile. I have young children and I'm really a preschool teacher at heart. So I love these kind of examples. Um, this is just a teacher who came up with this brilliant way to uh, show the kids in their class um, if the glue is fully closed, and that reduces spills, and it's adorable. So this is the kind of thing you would be looking at. If you're looking at a particular process step where you have a lot of waste or a lot of errors, you can think about, is there a way to visually represent the right thing to do um, to reduce those errors? The next type that we're gonna talk about is visual management of the work. And this is when you simply use a visual display to show who is doing what. So this is often used for workload balancing. Um, so this example that you see in front of you um, is a virtual example. So um, if I had given this presentation you know, two years ago, I probably would have had only 80 photos of whiteboards or um, physical things in here, but we're now working in a different world. We are using virtual tools more and more um, to, to, to show visuals for our teams. So this is one example of how you can use visual management in a virtual world. Um, this is a Trello board. Um, there are many tools out there to do um, virtual visual management. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Um, Trello is a very common one, so I have it a few times in my presentation, but explore what works for your team. So this example shows um, customer requests as they come in, who's doing them and how, what's done. And this might be for today, this might be for the week, um, but what it can help me do right away if I am the manager of this team or the person who is assigning work to know, okay, I need to assign this particular customer request. Maybe I'm not gonna give that customer request to Ashley right now um, because she has three things going on. Or maybe if I know that Ashley has the exact technical skills for this customer request, I can see at a glance that, okay, maybe I'm gonna ask Pua or Mika to help take one of Ashley's current requests. And so we can switch, sh shuffle the work around. But I can see that at a glance rather than having to email Ashley, can you take this job? Oh, you're overloaded. Okay, now I gotta you know, go find this thing. I can, right away, I can see exactly um, who is doing what and when. Another thing this type of, of um, example can be really helpful for is um, when we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, one of the things that's really important to look at is how assignments are being made. Who in your office is getting all of the glamour assignments, the ones that um, get, have you seen in front of leaders? Who in the office is doing all of the office housework? So when you display it, you might find patterns that help you improve um, the equity of your work. This is another very simple example of a family chore chart. Um, probably many of us have tried instituting these in our homes. Um, I love this one that it has the pictures. Um, sometimes you have non-readers in your family, right? Um, and so it might be helpful for this littlest one to see their picture um, instead of a name. But what this can do for you as the parent is if you walk into the house on Thursday and you find a big pile of laundry on the couch or heaven forbid, the floor, 
you can look back and say, wait a second, who was meant to fold the laundry on Wednesday? So it's a benefit for the parents and it's a benefit for the kids in the system. They might, they can know exactly what task they need to accomplish that day without having to um, ask the parent. They can, they can know, know the plan with a simple visual. Uh, and the last example I have in this category um, is about capacity. So sometimes we're not just managing who is doing what work, we're thinking about how much work can we do. This is an example from when I worked on a team of um, folks who facilitated lean projects. And we thought about the different phases of the lean projects and how many things we could really take. So we as a team could handle three, uh, six projects that were in the do check and adjust phase. And we would know, okay, if right now these only these three boxes are filled, we're great. If we got to six, we might know, okay, we might need to slow down the flow. And if we went over, if we hit seven, we would probably still take the project, um, but it would go into the red. And that would be a quick indicator to us. We're over our typical capacity. So we need to think about maybe not advancing these projects to the next phase until we've cleared some of that capacity or maybe not taking some on. If there are more in upcoming and scoping than slots that we have to facilitate a project, we can start talking to leaders about prioritization. So this is something, um, again, thinking about the virtual and physical world, we had this on a whiteboard and we simply would um, take a sticky note and trace around it. So all of these little boxes were um, boxes on a whiteboard that we could place sticky notes into. And we had it um, virtually as well. This was a Visio document. So you can um, adapt for what your workplace needs at the moment. The other thing to think about um, when we're talking about virtual visual management um, again, if we had talked about this two years ago, I probably would have, you know, had this bias towards, oh, physical is better, get, get your hands on it, put a post-it note on a board, nothing can beat that. But one of the things that we've discovered um, in doing more and more virtual visual management is that actually can significantly increase the accessibility. So most of these virtual tools are built so that screen readers can access them and you can have more people participate in that way. So there are some benefits. So if you're old school like me and you have that leaning, um, you can think about the benefits of, of virtual visual management as well. Um, visual management of the process. Yes. Oh, sorry, Heidi. I had, we had a quick question that um, pertained to the slide right before. Um, for that facilitation whiteboard, what do the colors indicate? Oh, yes. Um, I was trying to uh, fit it onto the slide, so I had to do some, some, uh, some editing. Um, those were members of our team. So I think, you know, one member of our team was blue, one member of our team was green. I was purple. Um, and so the colors mean that that slot is filled and who's filling it. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have asked Jess to um, interrupt with questions. I can't quite see the, the Q&A as I'm going along. So I'm grateful that um, Results Washington folks are monitoring that. And yes, feel free to pop in questions anytime. So um, visual management of the process flow, not to be confused with like a process flow map. Um, what we're talking about here is when you use a, a visual to display to show how work is moving through the steps of the process. So I'm going to show you a, a before and after that I love from um, an HR team in an agency where I used to work. So they, they had a board, right? They already have the right idea. They're making something visible, something and something they've got on display. So you can see right away how many recruitments that they have open. Um, but they looked at this and were really trying to assess, is this really telling us what they need to know? And then they transformed their board to this. Um, so instead of just showing how many recruitments there were, each box each uh, on the grid now indicates a different step of the process and each sticky note represents one recruitment. So those notes move through the phases um, as they go along and they have now have a 
at a glance look to where things are in the process and it can tell them the particular status of a request. So if I'm a hiring manager, I can come by and see where my recruitment is, but it can also tell them in the HR office thinking about their capacity. So if they know, okay, we have three things in draft recruitment and that's the most intensive work um, maybe we need to throw some extra people at drafting recruitments. I can see right here we have seven vacancies coming up, so we need to look into the few weeks coming up and make sure that we have planned for that. So it can give us a, um, an indication of, of where things are and what we need to be looking at. The next example is actually from when I worked at Results Washington. We um, would host a, a meeting every month. And um, when you have that type of recurring work, you do this, you find yourself doing the same tasks. So every month we had to decide on an agenda, make sure we sent an announcement and make sure we had the materials copied, et cetera, et cetera. So we had all of the, the steps or recurring steps on the left. And as they were completed during the month, they would move from these little X's would move from to do into doing and then into done. Um, and we would think about, okay, if we were um, three weeks from the meeting and these things weren't done, we were probably in good shape. If we were two hours from the meeting and these things weren't done, maybe we weren't in good shape. So it could give us a very quick look at where we were in the process, were we ahead or behind. Um, and the other thing that was nice about it is that at the end of the month, when the meeting was over, we would just move all of those X's back to to-do and we would start again. From the so it was a, a, also a waste-free, a waste reduction, um, post-it note waste reduction way to, to display that work. Um, the last example of visual management of the process flow that I'm gonna show you, um, again, it looks a little complicated, but it's because it's from a big team. This is from um, a team at DES of project managers who do um, public works requests, design, bid, build requests around the Capitol campus. And they have put together this visual board to help track their individual projects. And they do many, many projects. That's why it's, this is a tiny, tiny little snippet of their Trello board. So each column here is a phase of the projects and each card, that's what these little squares are called when you're working in Trello, is a particular project and they move through the columns from left to right as the project advances. So again, you can see how many projects you have in each phase at any given time. Um, and then what I love about this is if you were to click into one of these cards, I'll show you, um, there's a checklist of, of the steps. And so this can help also when we're thinking about standard work, um, they have these checklists and they can see which of these tasks is checked off and which isn't. Uh, you can also see without clicking into the card, you might be able to see these little numbers here that say three out of 76 things are done or five out of 122 things are done. And you can kind of get a sense of, of where you are in the project. So that's how we're looking at um, management of the process flow. Jessica? Um, what, so we're getting a question about what is the name of this program? Uh, it's called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. Um, like I said, there's lots of tools that you can look at. Um, you can just like um, go on the internet and look up um, work tools. Trello is, you know, my team has found it to be pretty easy, um, but there's lots of great things out there. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the last type of visual management that we'll um, talk about is visual management of performance. This is when you're using a display to show how your current performance compares to your standards or objectives. It, this is giving you the real time, you know, winning or losing, and it allows you to see, um, see and solve problems really quickly. Uh, so for example, this is a, um, a list of things that a child in a household might need to do throughout the day. And it's a nice checkoff checklist. The child, when they've completed a task, can flip up the, the magnet and mark that as done. And then I, as the parent, can come through um, and figure out, okay, are all of these things done? Great. 
Um, if not, what are the things that need to get done and how can we help those things get done? Um, you have to know what your norm is to manage in this way, right? So if I walk through in the morning, I might go, oh, wow, three things are already done, great. If I walk through after the kiddo has gone to bed and I see that toys never got picked up today, that's a different situation. So um, how I look at the board and when I look at the board and, and how we use it um, can vary. So another example is, is this, how many calls are on hold? How many agents are on calls? What's the longest call waiting? How many abandons? And again, you have to know what your norm is. If you're a large company, that has 300 calls at any given moment, then maybe 10 calls on hold is really good for you. And maybe this box would be green instead of red. If you're a small company who has 20 calls at any given point and half of them are on hold, you're probably in a different situation and you might need to use this information in the moment to decide to either activate a different hold message that says we're having longer than usual wait times or pull five people um, from a different team over to answer phones for the next half hour. You can make decisions in the moment. Um, this might be something that would be on a TV screen in the um, room where these calls are being answered, or it could be something that um, is, sits in the right-hand corner of your computer screen at all times. So you can always know what, what your status is. Um, and these things can be really simple. So this is an example of a really simple um, one. This is what day did a customer request come in? What day did we get that out the door? And how many days is that? Maybe your standard is five days and you know this is a really, really good week. Maybe your standard is one day and you know, gosh, we only hit that target um, one day this week. And so you can modify based on what you know. And then my last example is these speed limit signs. I know that most, many of you have seen them. You may, like me, have seen them flashing at you, telling you you're going too fast. Um, what I love about this is that your speed information is already available to you. It's available to all of us on our dashboard at any given time. I could know exactly how fast I'm going. But what this does, it puts the expected versus the actual right next to each other, it draws your attention to it. So I can see right away, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Um, occasionally they like, if you go are going too, too fast, they just start flashing the word slow at you. Um, that's even more management of telling you exactly what they want from you in this moment. So this is what, um, these are some of some very few examples of the kinds of things you can do um, to, to see right away what your status is. Um, so by way of just having a moment to think about the, the notion of visual management, imagine if I had told you about all of these types of examples and not shown you any pictures, you might have a different image in your head. So visuals are helpful. Now, I'm gonna to transition to, um, as I call them, Heidi's helpful hints. And for me, this is about how do you make your visual management useful and enduring? Um, so I'm gonna ask Kathy to put up our next poll. And I'm gonna ask um, those of you who, whether you've tried visual management or not, you may have still seen or observed some of these problems. So have you ever, felt overwhelmed getting started, that moment where you're, you know, staring at a blank board. Have you developed a beautiful visual management system and then nobody's using it? Uh, have you run into some visual management information getting outdated? Or we have the information, but we never talk about it? Or have you tried and gotten discouraged and given up? And maybe you've experienced many of these problems. You can check all that apply. So while you are answering that, I'm gonna talk about um, just a little bit about me. I, um, if you know me at all, you know that I love the tools. I love the practical hands-on stuff and I love lean and, and all that it is. But for me, um, I feel like what gets missed often is hearts and minds. So the tips that I'm gonna give you the next, uh, over the next few minutes, these next seven tips 
are really about how do we think about humans and the obstacles that they might run into and then what can we do to help overcome those obstacles to not just use visual management but use it really successfully. So in a moment here, Kathy will put up our poll results. Oh yes, less awkward waiting this time. Lots of you have experienced lots of these problems. Almost everyone is at 50%, um, especially people not using the visual management system. That is perfect. Um, we will talk about some tips that may help you understand why people aren't using the visual management system. And you may be a person in that system who has decided not to use the visual management system, right? Um, and you might now understand why. So I'm gonna go through, like I said, these uh, seven tips. And the first is this, and it sounds simple, but it is not. It has to be easy or you won't sustain it. I think we have all experienced these complicated tracking logs that ask for so many details that it takes longer to fill out the log than it did to do the work. Don't let this become that. You don't want people asking you, I'm sorry, you want me to do even more work? It should be so simple to fill out um, that the people who are asked to do it won't find it a burden. Um, I use the phrase, it should be unavoidably easy. Uh, you can use tally marks uh, on a piece of paper on your desk that get like posted on a wall at the end of the day. Don't make it hard, especially to start, make it easy. Or you might find, this is one of the reasons you might find that your data is frozen in time. Um, if instead of asking people to check something off, write up a number, write up a time, you're asking people to fill out complicated spreadsheets or make pie charts, you're gonna find that you're walking past a board in November and it hasn't been updated since April. So this is my very first tip is make it easy. It's very tempting to start with a very complicated system, but make it think about the people who will actually be updating the board and have some empathy for their situation. Go to their workplace if you need to see what it would be like for them to update it and make it so, so easy. My next tip is to embrace the messy but effective. This is hard for me. I love beautiful things. I love neat lines, um, but I have come to learn over time that sometimes the messy thing is the right thing to do. Handwriting is okay. You don't have to print every label, cut it out, laminate it. It's okay to just take a marker and scribble on a board. It's okay to use post-it notes um, rather than beautifully printed visuals. Um, if you are making changes to a board, ask yourself why. If it's just to improve the aesthetics, maybe try to resist it for a moment. If it's so your board is easier to read and interpret, that's great. But what can happen if you start feeling like it needs to look lovely is you can get this blank board overwhelm. Either you've started a Trello board and you can't decide what to name the columns or you can't figure out exactly what labels to use or you're literally looking at a big whiteboard and, and can't make yourself get started. Um, it might be that you're trying too hard to make it beautiful. I worked on a team once that had a very long ruler and I loved that ruler so much because all I wanted was perfectly straight lines. And sometimes you have to let go of that. Um, sometimes I talk about ordering your own barriers. Um, this is state government and sometimes ordering is slow. So I've definitely worked with teams who have said, we're gonna start visual management in six weeks when our new whiteboard that we ordered gets here, or when we can get a maintenance request to have something installed, or when we can find just the right magnet. Don't order your own barriers. Use what you have, rummage through your supply closet and get started. You also don't want people to get into this, like can't touch this mode, that's Heidi's board and it's beautiful and I don't wanna to touch it. If people are asking you to update the board for them, that might be an indication that you've made it so pristine that it isn't interactive. 
you want your board, so again, messy is good, but you also want it to be effective. The, um, there's a big risk of, of over-processing waste here to try to make it beautiful. What you really want is to make it readable. The um, kind of standard advice is you wanna be able to read it in 15 seconds, read and understand it in 15 seconds from 15 um, feet away. You want it to be such an intuitive visual way that it requires virtually no explanation. And honestly, if you think about the examples I showed you, um, some of them would have, I gave you a little bit of nuance, but probably just looking at those pictures would have given you an idea of what, what people were looking. So embrace the messy, but effective. My next tip is location matters. Put the board or the information where it makes the most sense for the work. It is hard enough for people to form new habits. If you are working in a physical space, think about how many steps. People, like literally no one is going to walk to a different area just to update a board that they never see. I mean, physically put it where it makes the most sense. Um, I've seen people do visuals on doors. So we were looking at how much time does it take to complete a process? And we had people write on the door as they walked in, what time they entered the room and on the way out, what time they exited the room. Put it where it, it makes sense for people. Um, if you have your visual hidden away in a conference room that you only see every two weeks, it is not gonna have the same value as if you put it in the hallway that people walk through multiple times a day. You also don't wanna run into this like hidden figures problem where you've got all this data, but it's a, um, an electronic spreadsheet buried in a shared drive somewhere, right? So resist that urge. Um, often when we're talking to teams and we ask, um, oh, you know, what does that data show? And people tell us, oh, we track it. Um, I'm glad you track it. Does anybody look at it? Does anybody use it? It should be um, unavoidable. Your, your visual management should be an unavoidable way for everyone on the team to have the same info about what you're doing. And what that can mean in a virtual world is if you have um, a team meeting once a week, always open the board, make that part of your standard process even if you aren't, don't have plans to discuss it so that you always have it in front of you um, and you can have that information at the same time. My next tip is customize the system so it makes sense for your work. You have to think about what you need to know and build from there. Visual management for visual management's sake isn't really going to help anyone. Um, this is why there's this really risk big risk of this copy and paste waste or oh if it's good enough for them that team down the hall built really good visual management and they're getting a lot of kudos for it so we should do that board too and we try to to lift and shift over um, and then we sometimes kind of just we're just not getting the same juice or the same flow as that other team does um probably almost none of the examples that i've shown you can you just go recreate and it's because you need to really think about your work. What do you need to know? If you're a call center, time on hold makes a lot of sense. For anyone else, not that helpful. That checklist style board, like I showed you for the um, posting a meeting, makes so much sense. It's a very valuable tool if you have repeatable work. But if your work changes every day and you don't do the same steps over and over, then that's not gonna be useful to you, right? So start with the core question is what do I need to see? What does our team need to see? What is gonna benefit us and work from there? This is um, a big one. It takes courage and a commitment to blame free communication. Visual management ends up displaying where we're doing great and where we're doing not so well and it's okay. That is the point. But in order for us to do that as a team, we have to really embrace the lean philosophy of problems are good. Um, and we say that a lot in continuous improvement, right? Problems are good. They're the gold. They're the treasure we're looking for. Because if we can see a problem, we can solve it. And if it's hidden, we can't. Um, so some problems that can come up, some things that can arise is if we treat problems as problems, 
you're very quickly going to lose all the power of your visual management. If folks want to hide what's really going on, um, because we start either thinking that problems are problems or people are problems, you're going to lose trust. So you, um, the point isn't to track you know, who's doing what and how fast and have star performers. It's about seeing how the process is going. And if things aren't going well, we always look at process problems, system problems, and barriers before we look at people and their individual performance. This is really, really important, especially when we're thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. If things are going to come to light, we need to think very carefully about how we react to those problems. Are we using an equity lens? Is there something that might make us respond differently to problems based on the people that are coming up with those, those problems? We need to have real commitment to blame-free communication from the leadership side and honor the fact that it takes courage to participate in visual management from the worker side. It's a huge trust builder or breaker. Now, the whole point of visual management, it, the whole value in it is seeing problems and then doing something about them, right? So you will not keep up the system if it's just information for information's sake. Um, sometimes you run into this immortalized data. Something is, um, your board has looked the same for months and months and months. If your board has looked the same for months and months and months, then you're not accomplishing the goal, which is seeing problems and then doing something about them. You can also run into this, you know, we're putting on a show. Oh, we're green again for this month and this month. And this. if you're green month after month after month after month, are you really measuring the right things? Um, or what about if um, sometimes we ask people, what if this turned red? What would you do? Oh, nothing. We would just know. Oh, okay. Then do you really need to know that? Is it the right thing to be tracking? So if you use a board and you start to see problems and then you don't do anything about them, not only are you wasting your time, this is another trust breaker, right? So use the information, talk about it, problem solve, uh, brainstorm together so that it's valuable for everyone. And then my last tip is, is this, um, and it's a tip here about visual management, but it's also sort of my life mantra, right? And it's this, adjust, don't abandon. So um, just because something doesn't work right away, uh, duh, like nothing's gonna work right away, right? Um, you need to um, adjust your board and continue to refine it until it works for you. You may have noticed, probably not, if you were to go back and look at the, um, at the example I showed you of our project managers um, and their Trello board, one of the cards on their board is improvement ideas about the board. So they're always thinking about, this is what Lean is about, right? Plan, do, check, adjust. How are you checking and adjusting your own visual management? Um, this is another reason you don't want to start ordering expensive things and memorializing things and taping things down and building permanent boards because you want to be able to adjust until it's meaningful to you. And if you don't, you might run into this, this notion of, eh, it's the same problem, different day. Or what I see a lot is we tried that once. So um, personal Kanban, um, which is that if you've ever seen the three column ready, doing, done, is sometimes the very first thing people are taught about visual management, and it's awesome. <laughs> it will help you organize your work. But for some folks um, that most of us who've used a personal Kanban for a long time have customized our system. Maybe I need a waiting column. Maybe I need an on hold column. Maybe I need a column for brainstorming. I probably have to figure out what's the right level of tasks for me to write. Do I like all the really little details or do I just like the big stuff? You've got to adjust until it works for you. Lots of people try the basic system and go, eh, that didn't help me that much. So visual management, Kanban, I don't really think there's much value in that. Keep working it until it makes sense for your team and include your team in doing that. So I'm going to show you a few, um, two sort of case studies about some examples that, that I've seen um, that I think are helpful illustrations of these points. Um, and this one is uh, all important bathroom door locks. 
so this is an example of a, a lock um, at Seattle Children's Hospital. So there's this, this is the very basic thing, right? They have some information there. They started thinking about it would be helpful to show when, how to lock the door. Okay, that's great. Um, and then around the corner, they've made a pretty significant improvement. Um, now they are using this type of lock. And this is the difference between a job aid here on the left side. It gives you some instructions, good. Visual management here on the right side, better, right? It shows you in real time, do you have the door locked or not? I love um, here also, if you think about accessibility and like the same amount of space, not only have they given you real time um, visual management, they've also thought about accessibility, right? So you have the word unlocked and locked, but maybe you have folks here who are not English speakers, who you also have the green and red indicators, but maybe those folks are colorblind, will you also have these icons, the unlocked and locked icons. So thinking about the accessibility of your visual management information is massively important. Um, I, I talked a little bit about um, the fact that there are folks with visual impairments. A coworker of mine recently sent me a case study about a team of software developers who had a blind teammate. And it was amazing what they had done with their visual management to make sure that their blind software developer could fully participate. They had lots of different techniques. They thought, do we need to do the whole whole board in Braille? And when it came down to it, just the labels in Braille were really helpful. And then they used um, some physical indicators. They used different types of push pins. So cylindrical push pins were for a certain type of project and round push pins were for another type of project. Um, when two push pins were next to each other, uh, in a certain way, those were the, the cases that were assigned to the blind software developer so he could find those really quickly. And they also use things like auditory signals. So um, uh, uh, they found a software that would play a certain note or a couple of notes um, when a code was went through successfully versus not successfully. And so instead of just the red and green that the rest of them saw, uh, there was now an auditory signal as well you think about how to make your visual management accessible to everyone, no matter what the situation. Um, this is an, another example. This is from a team I worked on and we thought about the annual in-service training that all of us in government have a lot of. I don't know about the rest of the world, but I'm imagining that annual training is pretty common. Um, and at first we had just the basic information, right? Who are we? what um, classes do we need to go to? And we would check off when we completed them. And then to make it a little bit better, we showed the progress at the bottom. So if you want the details about who has gone to fire extinguisher training, you can look up here. But if you wanna just know where we are on the path and how far we are towards completed, we've got the progress. And then we went further and said, well, what are our goals? What are we trying to do with this board? And what we are trying to do with this board is save ourselves from our common situation, which is we all saved our training until the last week and then maybe we were due or overdue. So we thought if we really wanna space this out, we wrote out all the weeks that we had until the training was due. And then for we set some milestones. By this week, we wanted to have all of us have two trainings completed. By this week, we wanted to each have four, seven, nine. The magnet was an indicator of where we are today. And then we also had a check-in. So we put this board where we had our morning huddle. So we all saw it every day. And when we reached one of these goal dates, <coughs> pardon me, we would check in. So we did pretty well the first time. We had all 100% of us had completed two of our trainings. When we got to this one, we um, were about 50% there. So we had to think about, do some root cause analysis. Why, why have we not finished those things? Um, and do some assessment. So I'm gonna leave you with this um, point, uh, well, two things. I'm gonna leave you with this tool and it will be on the conference website. Um, and I'm sure our Results Washington folks will put a link in the chat to it. Um, it gives you some questions to think about when you're developing um, visual management and then some questions so that you can uh, consider, have you followed all of these tips? 
um, going through this checklist when you're after you've developed visual management to check and see if it's appropriate um, will be helpful. And then I'm going to leave you with this sort of challenge. What in your workplace right now would benefit from being more visual? It doesn't have to be something big. It doesn't have to start a new board or start a new system. What could you take one little thing and make it more visual? And what will you try first? Jessica, are we ready for Q&A? Yeah, so we uh, just have, we have time probably for one question here, but I think will be helpful for folks. Um, what tips do you have for visual management in a hybrid work environment? So, yes. you know, this new way of working focuses on people being on site less frequently and how, how do people sustain their visual management when some folks are on site and some aren't? Yes, I think that's the hardest for sure. But again, it's thinking about the people. Um, and so uh, if you have half of your team that's hybrid and half that's virtual, think about what would you put on a physical board in that space so that everyone could see it every day. And then maybe at the end of the day, you have one number that gets transferred into a, a, a virtual system. Um, so you can think about how do you take, how do you use information in both places and how do you make them connect? You could certainly do all virtual and rather than a board, have a TV screen um, in so that everyone is seeing the same thing. If you're talking about like people who move, who sometimes they're in the workplace and sometimes they're um, at home, like for example, for Kanban, I love having them on my wall, but since I'm here, here, there, and everywhere. Right now, I've been using a manila folder that has my personal Kanban in it. And so when I am at home, I can open it up and put it on the table next to me, and I can take it with me in my bag when I go to work. So again, it's thinking about what do you need to see and having empathy for the experience of the people who will use it. Great. Thank you. Well, we are up on time. Thank you so much, Heidi, for the session. Um, you guys can visit our website, results.wa.gov, uh, and go to the link conference page, and you can find all the information and handouts from today. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you. And please feel free to email me. <laughs>